The EduTech guys present a conversation from our live coverage of FETC in Orlando, Florida from Thursday, January 25th, 2018. Enjoy the program. My name is um, Dr. Kathy Torregrosa, and I'm from Cranston, Rhode Island, where I am the coordinator of professional development, teacher evaluation, and teacher mentor programs. So in other words, my job incorporates anything to support teachers to do the work that they do. Sure. And so you ask a question, and I'm there to try and help. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so what brings you to FETC? Uh, two sessions. So yes, I did two okay. sessions. So I did a session on Tuesday, and I'm doing another one on Friday. Okay. Um, basically is to just share our journey as a district. So I came here with a team of people from my district awesome. to share our journey. We're actually only about two and a half years into the blended learning scene. Hmm. And I think we've come a really long way really fast. Oh. But we're a district that will probably never be able to afford one-to-one. So we're looking at true blended learning with station rotation. So it's, you know, a, a third of a class devices. But in some of our schools, we've got kids that bring their own devices. So we are pretty close to one-to-one. Mm-hmm. So I have a mix of what, what people are doing. And my role really is to keep asking the question, what do you need to move to the next step? What do you need to keep on going? What kind of supports do you need? What do your kids need? Mm -hmm. And I'll do co-teaching, co-planning, just professional development with them, and anything they need. It's kind of fun. My job changes every day. Yes, that's right. It does. does. (laughs) Do you find that um, that since you're moving in this direction, that the kids that bring their their own devices um, learn quicker that, okay, I'm bringing this device to use it for a specific reason here, and not to goof off as much, but to to, to use, use it for classwork? Yeah, it's it's something that came up while I was here in one of the sessions that I was attending as a participant. And something that I've been racking my brain with is some of our schools are, not mine specifically, but some schools are limiting access and like blocking Mm -hmm. certain things. Right. And yet the kids have got their device with them. And as soon as they hit that block, what are they doing? I'm assuming, because I've seen it happen, the kids now, their own device is going under the table on their knee and they're using their own device to get to where they want to. So I, I struggle with the fact of blocking things. I don't think that that's fair because we're trying to train kids to live in the world. Right. So we need to be training them to be good at deciphering what's a good site, what's a bad site, rather than blocking the site. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, um, that's one of the things I've been struggling with, and I've kind of heard that as a theme throughout, and I've heard some good suggestions about that. But it's something I think we all need in education to struggle with. Is like We want kids to be on task, doing what we want them as teachers to do, but how do you get them to be good digital citizens right. about using it appropriately in right. schools? Yeah. And that's a life lesson. They're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna run into it when they leave us. Mm-hmm. They're running into it when they right. go home at night. So it's better for us just to to help deal them learn. It. Yeah, deal mm-hmm. with it right then. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about modeling. Okay. Administrators helping to pick the right devices for their staff and their students. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I think it really needs to be bottom up on that one. An administrator really needs to be listening to what the teachers are using and their comfort level. If a teacher is really comfortable with a Mac and they're just willing to come into the blended world, give them a Mac. Don't force them into a Chromebook or a PC. Yeah. But if they're familiar with a Chromebook, give them that. So look at the comfort level, really talk to the teachers, find out what they are interested in and what they're comfortable using and build from there. Uh, same thing with the students, though. We can't leave the students out of that mix. Right. If the students you have in front of you are mostly using iPhones, then we need to look at apps that are iPhone-based and mm-hmm. what kids can do with that. So I think that's a large part of my job is constantly asking questions. Where are you? What are you using? Where do you want to go next? Right. What can I help you do next? And it means talking to students as well. But I really think that that's a hard thing for a top-level administrator to uh, understand what's actually happening day to day in the classroom. And honestly, that's really not their role. I want their role to be doing the big picture job. Right. right. But let us do, you know, the administrators, the building level administrators and the teachers and the students drive those decisions. I really think when we're making such a huge financial commitment on equipment, we need to be having that conversation with students in the room. Yeah. Right. What are you using? What do you want? Yeah. What will help you learn? Exactly. Yeah. And it, and it's, um, uh, well, it's it's surprising to us because we're in this, but uh, how many uh, administrators, and, and really even if there are uh, there are teacher discussions before it goes to administrators, how many of those don't involve the students? Mm-hmm. You have the people who are ultimately either benefiting or getting hindered by whatever these decisions are, and they're the, they're the 
ultimate recipients of everything involved. How are they not, how do you not include them in that right. conversation? And we've been for a long time involving students in conversations about curriculum and courses that they want. Yeah. Why aren't we asking them what yeah. technology they want to use to, and what do they need to explore? And then you add on that layer of project-based learning or maker stations. Mm -hmm. They need to decide what needs to be in that maker space. Right. Not us. Right. <laughs> yes, yeah. exactly. So okay. you were talking about how how far you've come, how fast you've come in terms of your blending learning environments and, and in talking about you know PBL and makerspace. What are some of the factors you think uh, that you attribute to that? Why, why did that happen? Uh, I, the best one I would say is that the conversations about blended learning in my district are horizontal, not vertical. Mm. So we really have an open communication from the superintendent to the administrators to the teachers and back again. And it, we're more and more often including students in that horizontal mm -hmm. structure as well now. But that, I think, is a big piece, is that everybody is really on the same page, and we're working very well together. We have a great labor management cooperation going on in my district, which helps hugely. Yeah. Um, and then because of that fluidity of the conversation, we're able to build quicker. We don't, we're not hitting some of those um, design team blocks that other folks have <laughs> dealt with. And I would say the underlying reason for that is the respect. The mm -hmm. superintendent has respect for the educators. The educators have respect for the superintendent, and they understand that we're all there for the kids and their learning and the benefit. And so, okay, how do we work to make this happen so it can work? Yeah, yeah. that makes that's great. That makes sense. So, do you find that your faculty, since you guys are moving so fast, that the faculty, as they learn more about how technology has greatly in, improved, just in the last twelve months, that their device preferences are changing? Um, that they're realizing, you know, I can do everything I need to do with a Chromebook. Right. Yeah. I, that's absolutely true. We had a program that ran, I'm from Rhode Island, so uh, we had a program that ran in Rhode Island that provided teachers training, and if you came to the training for a week in the summer, they handed you a MacBook. And that went on for a couple of years, which yeah. meant a lot of teachers were really I re familiar I remember with that Mac. program, yeah, right. yeah. So now we're all Google districts, and when you're a Google district, you start thinking, Google, well, you can do that stuff on a MacBook. Sure. But now the teachers are starting to switch over and to do more Chromebook work. So yeah, yeah our technology needs have changed. And I think that's from now on, that's going to consistently happen because technology is going to change so fast, we're always going to be trying to keep up. I think from a district point of view, our job now is to say, which of the technologies, because of you know financial issues, sure. which of the technologies will last the longest and invest there, and then hope the rest can be online and, and apps that we can use with those tech, right. those hard devices. So yeah. moving this quickly, have you noticed that, and, and, and I feel like this, uh, I was just telling a couple of interviews back, my, my superintendent and I have this conversation a lot, very forward thinking. We, we've, we've, we keep trying the technology to make it mm -hmm. available for everyone across the board. But I believe we're getting real close to there where it's it's now just a piece. It's just a tool that we're used to. The kids consider it their crayons. Right. It, it's a protractor. It's, for the kids, it is. Yeah. It is. And it, the hard part not is... Not for all of our not, teachers. <laughs> that's, the, that's when we can get to that point, right? Yeah. But, well, but I think that I think every single teacher now has some kind of tech experience. They've got a cell phone that they're using. They have their own laptop. Yep. And so what I try to tell them is you're already doing blended learning because you are using technology somehow within your classroom. You may not be doing a true station rotation. You may not be doing a true choice um, activity. But if you've got technology in your classroom, you've already begun the journey. And I think that's the message that has helped us kind of move forward quickly, is we always say, you're already partway there. If you've ever designed a lesson where the kids had to do something online, you're already there. Yes. Now we just want to expand it. So yeah. I think that has helped us move that initiative. But I also have to do a shout out. We're, we used a consulting company. So we had the Highlander Institute from Providence, Rhode Island come in. And we hired them to work with two schools, an elementary school and a middle school, last year as two pilots. Just a small group of teachers in each one of those. This year, the Highlander is now working with five schools. There's 26 schools in my district, so I'm trying to support the other 21 right. because I'm not the Highlander Institute. <laughs> but the Highlander Institute has really come in and helped kind of rejuvenate people and say, you know, here's a process for you. Okay, let me help you with that process. And here, try this and let me come back and help you with what went wrong and let's fix it. So I would, you know, you, so not everybody can afford a consultant, and I have no idea how much Highlander costs, but has been a 
valuable resource for our teachers and has really set a model for us mm -hmm. that once we no longer can afford Highlander, we have a model in place that we can duplicate. And I think that's what Highlander's expectation is, that they're providing you something that you can duplicate. But you do need sometimes an outsider to come in and say, well, this is where you're going, and here's a little push. And that has been really helpful, too. So I have to give kudos to Highlander for helping <laughs> yeah, us out. That's <laughs> awesome. great. That's so great. What services, apps, you know, programs, digital, technology-based, um, are you guys embracing that, you know, helping to make this move? Well, one of the big pieces that I think is different for blended learning for teachers is to use the technology to collect data on students mm -hmm. and then to use that data to inform instructional decisions. That's a big piece, and that's sure. that's the stuff that's kind of the hardest step for yep. them. So the district has um, signed on with IXL and STAR assessment data mm -hmm. as the beginning level of Here's a way where you can collect data on all your students and use that data to drive your grouping, your instructional decisions, where they need to go to next. Uh -huh. But that's really just assessment. That doesn't drive instructional tasks. Not right. daily. And yep. so we need to then move that, okay, here's your data. Now what are you gonna do with that data? Mm -hmm. It's just like lesson planning before technology, is mm -hmm. you gave them a test, you see the results of the test, what are you gonna do next? And so now the next includes technology yeah and so it the steps they know they understand those steps yeah. but you have to include now the, the technology for that yeah. and we really let it pretty much wide open they're letting teachers really do kind of whatever they want as far as apps what their comfort level is uh -huh. and then share between each other mm -hmm. and I create a lot of playlists I work now k-12 I'm a I'm a teacher released full-time to do this work former kindergarten first grade teacher but now I work k-12 which awesome is awesome for me. Yes. Like, yes. I'm really working heavily with a charter school this year, a high school that I just love. Yeah. And um, so it's really, I mean, I'm the blended learning stuff is my passion and, and the technology and how to do that and informing instruction is my passion. So I can do that for any content area. The teacher is the content expert. I keep saying, you understand history better than I do. I got the technology though. So yeah. you know, the, the combination of the two of us, we can pull this off. And I think that was really helped as well. That's cool. That's very cool. So Let's stop talking about what you came to do. Let's okay. talk about what you're getting out of Fetsy. Oh, interesting. What are you looking for? What's your, what's your big, exciting, I want to do this? So basically I'm trying to gather information to answer questions that teachers asked me before I came. Uh -huh. And th that's really about strategy planning, lesson planning, those kinds of things. I just went to a session on you know, thinking of the tasks before you actually think of the apps. Mm. I mean, that that's the question my teachers are asking, and that's pretty much the question that I'm looking at as I go along is, how do I get them to understand lesson planning is lesson planning is lesson planning? Right. Mm -hmm. And then once you decide on your learning goals, your essential questions, and what you want kids to be able to demonstrate for their learning, how do you then pull the technology in, and how do you make those best decisions on which technology does what? I think that comes to what is it you want kids to do to demonstrate. So once you have sure. that essential question, how do you know kids know that stuff? Mm -hmm. That determines the app or the program or whatever you want to use. Right, you know? exactly. And that's what's great about this place because <laughs> yeah. there's so much of those available. Yes, yeah. yes. yes. tons. Um, so if uh, our listeners want to get in touch with you and learn more about what you guys are doing, how you're moving forward, and uh, what's the best way to do that? Probably the best way is to email me. So it would be K Grossa. that's tough, K. T O R R E G R O S S A at C P S E D dot net. That's my email address at school, and that's the fastest way because I'm constantly checking that. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Cool. Well, um, I hope the rest of your Fessy is awesome. Thanks. And it sounds like you're having a wonderful time. It is a great time. You've been listening to a recorded conversation from EduTech Guys live coverage of FETC 2018. For more information about EduTech Guys, visit edutechguys.com. And Thanks for listening.